Hello all of you wonderful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com Here in my isolation station in Wales and back with another episode of These Things Suck A not list where I and my lovely friend Jeremy get a little bit spicy Put a little bit of that cayenne pepper right up our bummels And have a moan about the video game industry And this is the thing with the current situation that's going on right now, there is one thing that I missed most, and that is being able to go out bloody anywhere. Like, get in the car, just go for a drive and feel the wind in my... Never mind. And when you look at the video game verse, there are tons of brilliant options for travel, whether it's driving up the walls in Roll Cage, drifting like a lazy eye around the futuristic tracks in Wipeout, or not even questioning why Sonic doesn't just run in Sonic All-Stars Racing Transform, because that game is bloody tit juice. What I'm trying to say is, is that there's a pure joy that video game vehicles can bring. And yet, here we are, an episode of These Things Suck, so what the f*** do you think I'm going to be talking about other than vehicles that handle about as well as the Titanic on ice, or ran about as well as Red Dead 2 on PC. Ooh, muy caliente. So buckle up and let's plow headfirst into a truck as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these video game vehicles f***ing suck! So let's begin with talking about a vehicle that turned what would have been otherwise a brilliant and sci-fi operatic odyssey into a bloody Benny Hill sketch. I am of course speaking about the Mako from Mass Effect 1. Also by the way, you're probably wondering where my beard went, it's because I wanted to see if I had a chin. Turns out I do, and it's a weak one. The Mako from Mass Effect 1 was to driving what Carol Baskin was to her first husband. In that it was pure murder, brother! <laughs> ah, Tiger King memes. I really made it. Stay relevant, Jules. Now when you look at this six-wheeled beast, you probably get a red giant in your pants. It's sleek, it's armoured, it's got a pew-pew stick on the top, sign me up. However, the moment that you take control of this, it does become apparently clear that this thing isn't powered by any horses, but by bloody jumping tree frogs, as the bouncy, low-gravity controls and absolutely dire driving turns any semblance of cool that this vehicle had and flushed them down the toilet. Now here's the thing, the Mars Rover in real life doesn't look like it tears up shit at the weekends at the monster truck rally. I mean, it looks like basically it's a kettle wrapped in some tinfoil, and it had to be like that because it had to be light to break the burly bonds of gravity. But the thing is here is that the Mako looked like it was a piece of beef that would have made butchers salivate. However, this doesn't cut the mustard, it just cuts the f***ing cheese. This absolute mutton of a motor flops and flips all over the place and makes me genuinely scared for anyone inside it. I mean, imagine having a wounded teammate in the back and just being like, don't worry, we'll get you to a hostel, patch you up. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, his spleen's just gone off the bloody roof. Fantastic. Got a bit of gallbladder in my eye. And yes, I know that you can have fun with this. I mean, there is a pure joy to be had in just sending the Mako off a cliff and just bouncing it all the way down only to right itself and smash into enemies that have terrible collision detection, so they just go pinging off across the horizon. But still, it does not make you look good. I mean, everything else in Mass Effect is building you up and Shepard and his crew to be this amazing force to be reckoned with. But your enemies are bloody laughing at you when they see you careering down the hill in this thing. Bloody piece of shit. In short, it makes you look like a weeping chode who everyone is going to be laughing at. I will make no bones about the Mako, it's gotta go. And to be fair, it did in Mass Effect 2, to the relief of many. So from one vehicle that soared and dived and swooped when we didn't want it to, to one that we prayed actually would, but never delivered, and that is the RC plane from GTA San Andreas. And just by the way, RC, I'm pretty sure stands for right to control when describing how to fly this f***ing thing. You get the pleasure of flying this biplane in the mission supply lines, which is gifted to you by this adorably annoying character called Zero, which, by the way, is the exact number of ratings that I would give this mission out of 10. And this is all down to how this absolute piece of arse controls. On paper, the objective is clear. Take the plane and shoot down mail order goons from a rival business. And you know what? You'd be forgiven for thinking that flying and farting out bullets 
shots at delivery drivers would be a right laugh, right? I mean, it's basically where we're all headed once the Amazon drone packages gain sentience and try to take over. God, I didn't need to think about that this early in the morning. However, look at this footage and tell me what you see. No, it's not a plane that looks about as responsive as a coma patient. It is that there is a bloody fuel gauge that you have to manage, meaning that if you spend too long wrestling against the controls, you'll fail the mission. And this isn't even like a mission that gives you a lot of space to play around with, to find your bearings and get your, your, your wings leveled or whatever it is, the terminology that pilots used. Get your head space. Huh, that actually probably works. Anyway, it's got all these tight corridors and lampposts. The lampposts, my god. I mean, this is the thing. Never have I driven into so many of them ever in any GTA game. Yet here in this plane, lampposts. It was like, honestly, it was like the plane was sexually attracted to them. And to top it off, some of the delivery drivers even fire back at your plane, which has all the survivability of a dog who likes chewing electrical wires. All of this makes a mission that is about as fun a prospect as pulling out your own teeth and then entering a how many salty lemons can you suck competition. When compared to the other bane of this game, I would much rather be following a train with an overweight manatee on the back with all of the accuracy of a Watch Mojo research top 10 list. I would have rather been on the fing Hindenburg than fly around in this piece of crap. You know what? It is less like soaring like Icarus and more like, I can't believe you've done this. That actually genuinely hurt. Wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> right, let's move on from a plane crash and talk about an experience that absolutely derailed an otherwise perfect game. I don't know why I emphasize derailed. It is not a train, it's the uh, airboat from Half Life 2. No, Jules! You can't say that about Half Life 2. Bad, Jules! Bad egg! Bad! Oh, boy. oh God, my eye! God! <laughs> Hello, dial a dickhead. Rich, what? What? How are you doing? You were just... Where have you gone? How are you phoning me? You're meant to be... What? How are you doing this? What's going on? <laughs> oh, the power I have over that bald, eggy boy when I edit his videos. He'll never learn. <laughs> Okay, okay, fine, I've learnt my lesson. I'm not gonna say anything bad about Half-Life 2, I promise. Okay, let's all just calm down and talk about something that I know no one will have a problem with me bad-mouthing, and that's the Warthog from Halo. Sorry, I just completely spaced out for a second there. I meant to finish my sentence. It's the Warthog from Halo when you've got an AI driver. <sighs> Because, I mean, when you're cruising in this bruiser, turning the flood into fish food in the solo campaign, or blasting over jumps with that chain cannon roaring in the multiplayer, this vehicle is absolute sex sax. But when you've got an AI driver, it's more like this. I cannot fathom how the developers at Bungie thought that this AI was good enough for this game. I mean, they drive into rocks, get stuck, drive so goddamn slowly that the Covenant light you up like it's one minute past 419. And worst of all, it means that nine times out of ten, you'll have to get out of the passenger or gunner's seat and have to boot them out to get the job done right. And that is if if they decide to wait around for you because, oh my, they will scream off into the distance and get themselves absolutely ruined just as much as they will actually come back and be like, oh yeah, I'll come and pick you up and sometimes they'll even hit you. Idiots, absolute idiots. I get that Master Chief is meant to absolutely embarrass the regular Marine because he is a super soldier, but at the same time, it's like these guys need the fucking training wheels put back on. It's so bizarre to go up against enemy AI that evolves to your moves, that tries to flush you out of cover, who will send smaller units in while the larger boys get into position, and then to go to this, it's honestly an embarrassment to ride in a warthog with one of these burks at the helm. And you can almost hear the Covenant screaming with laughter as this warthog comes flying over the horizon, over the hill, smashes into the side of a building, awkwardly reverses, and then smashes into the same building again, and then blows up. Honestly, I bet Chief was glad he had a helmet on because he was probably more red in the face than Brock Lesnar after two minutes of cardio. LOL, he a beetroot! And speaking of an absolute slog of an experience, it is time, my friends, hooray! <sighs> to talk about Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts. Great.
Because here, it is not just a case of one vehicle being a sweaty flat, but instead the entire mechanic of vehicle creation ruining a franchise in one fell swoop. You see, when Microsoft bought out Rare, they did something truly revolutionary, something that has never been done with a video game developer before. They told them, effectively, to stop making games. Yes, that's right, for a stint starting in 2002, Rare's output dropped considerably until teases started also dropping that Banjo-Kazooie 3, Banjo 3, was on the horizon. Ooh, mm. Ooh that trailer, oh yes, yes, mm, that looks amazing. It's got the promise of more jiggies, more joys, and more bears and birds than you could shake a honeyed bird feeder at. However, at no point did anyone at Rare or Microsoft ever say that this game was actually not going to be about platforming, not going to be about joy, not going to be about fun, but instead about f***ing cars. This was a platforming franchise through and through, and yet nuts and bolts through a spanner in the works by taking what worked and trying to appeal to a, air quotes, wider audience. Now let's just stop and be serious for a moment here, because this is the thing. Banjo-Kazooie 1 and 2 were huge smash hits on the N64. They had both the critical acclaim and the sales to back it up. Hell, it's why Microsoft was even interested in buying Rare in the first place, because of the success of these two titles. And when they bought them out, and they had all these rumors coming out, they built even more hype. What I'm trying to say is, is that the market audience was already there. It was theirs to lose. So when they were talking about appealing to a wider audience, the only people that I think that this actually genuinely could have appealed to more than, than the people they already had, the interested audience, were fat blancmange heads who shouldn't have been playing this f***ing game in the first place. The original two games, mm, crispy, toasty, crunch, crunch, mm, that's like French toast for the brain. This abomination, on the other hand, ooh, it's like wet bread and get it away, I'm not a f***ing duck, etc, etc. Now you might be leaping to this game's defense and being like, oh Jules, it's not even that bad, but this is the thing. It is. <laughs> You could beat the game with one vehicle type because it was just so imbalanced, it wasn't even implemented well. And for that reason, nuts and bolts felt like a piston right up my marrow slide that caused me to grind my gears into dust. I would rather walk than use any of these vehicles. I would rather walk over broken glass, over hot coals, the face of a baby, than use any of these vehicles. And for that reason, I say one thing. Good day, sir. Jeremy, follow it up. Good day, sir. Yeah, that's right. We've good day to you. Bye bye. And there we go, my friends. That was another episode of These Things Suck. I hope that you enjoyed that. And yes, I probably have gone a little bit insane thanks to the situation that's going on at the moment. Can't use the real terminology. Otherwise, YouTube will demonetize us. Doesn't that seem a little bit strange? But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. I love doing this series with all of my heart, even though it is definitely shortening my life. So please let me know what other ideas you'd like to see. I would love to carry this on and get a little bit of the old dialogue going as well. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over at RetroJ with a zero on Twitter, or you can go over to my board game channel, which is called Live and Let's Dice for some other spicy D&D Warhammer content. Mm, mm, eat it up. It's like a buffet for the senses. But before I go, I do want to talk about one thing, and that is we detailed today about video game vehicles that absolutely suck, things that drove us to insanity, and I hope that you are giving yourself a bit of a break and treating yourself fairly, because I do not want any of you driving yourselves insane with the situation that's going on right now. Be kind to yourself, speak to people, you're at home with your family members now, this is probably a very good time to start building connections, talking to people, making sure that you are surrounded with love at every angle, because trust me, we we all need a bit of fairness and kindness in our lives every once in a while. I wish you nothing but love, happiness and success and I really hope you achieve those goals. But remember, you can sometimes only get there with support, so don't be afraid to ask for it. Treat yourself well and I'll speak to you soon, alright? Peace. Peace.